Welcome everyone to the uh, Gentleman Panda podcast, our uh, irregularly scheduled, you know, broadcast hey, this of is, this. We're, we're <laughs> starting a podcast. Like we we are restarting a podcast. Right, we did this in 2016. Yep. And then uh, it died. Are you sure? Was it 2015? Was it 2016? I think it's 2016 because I think that's what it says on YouTube for when we uploaded it. Sure. Yeah. So we did that. Yep. And then. We got busy with life. Life happened. Life but happened. this is still something important that we'd like to do. So yeah. we're like, hey. We should start doing this again. We should do this again. Yeah. So, new year. New year. New resolutions. New resolutions. Yeah. So I'd here like we are. We podcast every week. Yeah. Heck yeah. So, we're going to try and make this a thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, here we are. And since it is the new year, uh, we figured we might as well uh, take this podcast and reflect a little bit on the past year. 2018 was rough, but there were still some things. That I mean, were 2018 for. was better than 2017, but it was still a bad year. <laughs> I don't agree. I think 2018 was worse than 2017, personally. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there. Either way, there's yeah. still things that made 2018 pretty cool. Yep. And yeah, or significant, you know. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they're worth talking about. Yeah. So we're talking about ten good things. Ten. I have five. Uh, I have 10. 10 good things of 2018 slash 5 good things. So 15 total good Sure. Things. We might we have, have thi- You know what, Jen? We just have things from 2018 we want to talk about. No, they're all good things. Though. Yeah, we have things. Right. So <laughs> okay. my point is, is like we're reflecting on the year. Yes. I might have more than you. We might have duplicates. We have not talked about this. Yeah, this, this is going to be a surprise. We right, might have overlap. And then so- John was like, hey, we should we should talk and see if we have overlap. And I was like, no, no, no. Let's leave it all for the it's podcast. It's got to be a surprise, man. So all right, all right. Do you okay. want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Because I have a longer list. Yeah. So to preface before we get in the list, um, we did not pick things that, uh, like if they were media, we did not specify that they had to have come out this year specifically. Right. Mm-hmm. It just had to be something that we may have picked up for the first time this year. Something we interacted with this year. Right. right. Exactly. Because I do have things that came out last year right that that, i interacted with this year so for me it was my 2018 right but yeah no that's a good preface yeah yeah okay so yeah i I can go first um you want me to go first i have a longer list sure yeah let's do that all right i'll go first uh the first thing is very prevalent to this podcast oh buying streaming equipment yeah and registering our llc of the gentleman Canada. yep so those were two things that happened this year we we bought when we did the podcast before, we just like pulled a microphone out and attached it to a, a laptop, laptop and called it the day. Yeah. This time we were like, if we're going to actually do this podcast. Or streaming. Or streaming in the future, which we're hoping to do. Right. right. Do more yep. with the Gentleman Panda. First, we need to like own the license of it. Right. Yeah. So we registered yep. the LLC, which mm-hmm. is cool. Yep. And then the other thing we did is we bought on Black Friday, we bought mics. Shock mounts, pop filters, uh, pop filters and, and uh, adjustable arms. Yeah. yeah. And then we mm-hmm. installed software and we're trying to make the audio sound pleasant. We're hoping yeah. this is as better. it grows, maybe we'll, we'll get we'll visuals can... at this point. Yep. Just we audio. could just afford audio. Yep. So that's where we started. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that was the first thing that I have on my list. And that's why I wanted to start with it. Because we would not be here in this podcast without... That investment, which yeah. was a cool thing. It was a very cool thing. And speaking of investment, um, uh, in it, within the last year, or a little, maybe a little bit more in the last year, we have both finally replaced both of our computers. That was that was on my list too. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry. Do you want to jump to that? No, or... no. I mean, we can talk about it. Sure. Yeah. So um, we both managed within the last year. Mm-hmm. We both managed to replace. Uh, both of our computers, which was huge. Which we're using my old computer for this podcast, which is kind of funny. But yeah. yes, um, I I did. I bought a new computer to. Mine was no longer supporting a lot of big software programs, and it was just it couldn't keep up anymore. Right. So yeah. like it was time. I guess. Yes. Exactly. So I had it for almost five years. Mm-hmm. It still works, obviously. That's how we're using it for the podcast now. It's just not my main machine station and yeah. you replaced your yeah. old laptop with uh, a 
new desktop so I can continue to work with it and upgrade it and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's just, which is super huge for us because we do so much 3d work. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it is one of those things where we really do have to have computers that can keep pace with what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, no, and definitely. And like for jobs and for, you know, our own personal interests of stuff that yep. we do, mm -hmm. we have to have computers that kick butt. Yeah. So it was a, it was a big investment, but I think we're both very happy with what we have. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I got the new 2080 graphics card. Yep. Mm hmm. And there's like not a lot of software that even super supports it yet. I'm so cutting edge. I feel very like yeah, but, on the bleeding edge. But I'm but excited. When when Epic Games gets um the new version of DirectX up and running, it'll be uh, it'll be good. Yeah, and there'll be more games that'll be using it too yep. because of that, which will be exciting yeah, the... to see the card like actually perform. Yeah. But I think I think it'll be good. I, I know a lot of people were pretty negative about that card coming out, but, like, there's a lot of cool stuff on the development side. Yep. That... So, to be to be perfectly clear, guys, uh, one of the biggest reasons why I'm really excited for the new card mm -hmm. is that a lot of games will be able to start utilizing the new technology that the card provides. Right. Now, a lot of people were negative about it because they're like, oh, that seems useless, that seems bad. But the developers, specifically, like, guys from Epic Games, who build the Unreal Engine, you know, obviously they make Fortnite, Fortnite. But, they, but you know, they're also known for the engine. Uh, they're really excited because they're going to like, those guys are just crazy, crazy smart. They are cutting edge professionals in the industry and they are looking how they're going to be able to utilize the new functionalities of these graphics cards and uh, the gaming industry as a whole, in terms of development time mm -hmm. and in terms of, uh, graphics quality, specifically the lighting quality that they can accomplish in games and how quickly they can iterate on it and make, you know, changes and adjustments. All of that's going to speed up, which means theoretically that means better games in the future. Right. More time to produce those games Correct. because and you're not working on yeah. stuff that the computer can do for you. You can take all those artists and all that money and put them towards creating a, a beautiful lighting setup and an interesting lighting that helps tell the story instead right. of just lighting that works so you right. can see it flipping character. Yeah, exactly. Instead of fighting lighting to make sure it you know meets the minimum requirement, you can actually make something that looks awesome. Right, and that came out this year too. Yeah, that's that super card. exciting. So yep. I mean, this still kind of fits in with our thing. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Cool. You want me to go? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, this one's relatively recent. Of another mm -hmm. thing I acquired this year was uh, markers. For Christmas, oh, yeah. I got a set of Copic markers. I've never had Copic markers. I've never... Most everything I do is not a physical medium. It's all digital. Can you explain what Copic markers are for those who don't know? They're really nice, like, paintbrush markers, I guess is the best way to describe them. They're markers that use um, alcohol-based paint, um, so that way the colors mix really easily and you can get gradients and pretty blends together. Um, and then the br the tip of the marker itself isn't a hard tip. It's an actual brush. Mm -hmm. So you can more or less like paint the colors in. So it's a little bit more of an organic experience. Um, and I had done a bunch of research online. And there were a couple of the ones I was debating between the Blick Studios, which I've heard good things of, mm -hmm. and then obviously Copics, which are super expensive. Um, and for Christmas, I received a box of them, and I'm very excited to play with them. I haven't gotten much time yet, because obviously Christmas was just, like, a week ago. If that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did a sketch mm -hmm. and played around with it. I realized after it that I should have tested the colors on scratch paper first, because it ended up being way too dark. But I was able to salvage it. It wasn't yeah. the worst drawing of my life. No, no. By all um, means, it was good. And I'm excited to practice with it a lot more and just get get into doing physical and digital medium um, instead of just uh, just digital. Yeah. So. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. Cool. Do you want me to go? Yeah, yeah, go oh, for it. Cool. Um, so, uh, the first one on my list, so I have uh, a number of things that have to do with media that has come out in, in recent years. Yeah. Um, that you... The enjoyed this year yes right. correct so for example um uh persona 5 came out last year um early last year 
P5 is on my list, too. So, uh, Persona 5, uh, I don't think really needs much of an introduction at this point. It's been out for almost, almost two years. Yeah. Um, but it when it came out, it rocked the industry. It was so full of style and swag and It's like flavor. a very unique experience. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. And they, uh, you know, the other Persona games have, have received some acclaim, but Persona 5 specifically this time knocked it out of the park. In fact, it did so well uh, that they have done an entire animated series. Yeah, I need to watch that. I have been watching it. I will admit it is not as good as the game. Um, if you guys get the chance to play the game, uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, it, in my opinion, it is, it is the uh, true experience for the story. But as a fan of the game, um, I have been really enjoying watching the show. Um, and man, I love the music from that soundtrack. Yeah. Um, they did. So jazzy. Oh, it's so, it's just, it's, it's, it is food for the soul. <laughs> um, you know, Accurate. It's, it's so good. So I've been really enjoying that. And, um, you know, there are certainly criticisms for it, for the, for the animated series, but you know what, all in all, uh, I felt that, uh, it was just a solid addition to uh, the library of stuff that I've been enjoying. So I wanted to bring it up here. Yeah, no, I agree. P5, I love P Persona 5. Uh, P5. Anyway, for those of you that don't know what P5 means, yeah. Persona 5. Um, I love the art style and like the splashes of color and the mm -hmm. black and the red and everything. Playing the game gives me slight anxiety, though, because of like the timing sequences. But um, I... I feel like the characters were really what I enjoyed about yeah. P5 was the characters are all interesting and unique and uh, the story is different. It's, yeah. It's good. Um, it's a good game. It's a solid RPG that has its yeah. own unique feel. Like it almost feels like a Final Fantasy game, but it's totally different at the same time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, for any of you who don't know, it, it is a... The main thrust of the the gameplay is it is one half um you know pokemon style final fantasy turn-based tactical combat uh and then it is the other half is um like japanese high school social simulator uh, well, visual um, novel visual almost. novel yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like half a visual novel and then half a final fantasy like battle RPG. tactics rpg yeah honestly it's like a better final fantasy then. Compared to the recent Final Fantasies that 15. have come out in the last The first half years. of 15, you know, was great. And sure. then, no. But 15 didn't come out this year. We didn't experience it this year, so I'm going to move on from that. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, the other one that I want to mention mm -hmm. that just came out that mm -hmm. we've had a lot of fun with is Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Smash Brothers game came out. Yep. Um, Ultimate. Smash Brothers Ultimate. And we unlocked, I unlocked all the characters in two days, and I was very proud of myself. Because it took a lot, a, of time. a lot of time, but it's very fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoy just returning to Smash. It's you know what I mean. It's a, yeah, seeing it in top form has been excellent. Um, I do have a criticism for it though. Oh, I don't like how low the the damage counters. You once you hit one hundred percent, you can boot someone, and I'm used to like being able to rack that up to like 300 percent on the older ones. Mm. And like really playing in that space and you don't have that as much which yeah. is kind of annoying i personally wish there was a way that you could set how fluctuate like how... the tolerance level of the damage counters yeah yeah no no i agree the balancing is definitely different um it's still a great game don't still get me wrong. a great game uh the only major complaint i have is king k rule is bs and should be nerfed and what the heck nintendo like, why did you think that that was a good idea? It's, well, because he's so, he can return to the stage so easily for being a heavy character. Yeah. I think that's what really, and he has range. Like, yeah. normally you don't have one or the other. But still, a great addition to Smash yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, so uh, my next one is a topic that is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, Destiny 2... 
Forsaken. <laughs> this is in my list too. Came out in September on the one year anniversary release of of Destiny Two. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I know that for many people who are fans of Destiny, you probably are are probably familiar with what's been going on. Um, but Destiny for... Two took a fall from grace from Destiny One. Yeah. So to to give you a very brief summary, guys. Uh, when Destiny 1 came out, uh, we were all excited for it, but it was a little flat. And then there were just two questionable DLCs that came out in that first year, and yeah. they were kind of garbage, and everyone was kind of mad. And then The Taken King came out a year later, after Destiny 1, and it was a smashing success, and it re-overhauled the game. And then a year later after that, Rise of Iron came out, and, and that, that was, was like best. that was the best time for Destiny. There were lots of raids, there was lots of content... The game was doing really well. It was fantastic. And, and, then, and it was fun to play, even if you had to replay the raids. Like yeah, they, yeah, The raids exactly. are so fun. I wish they were... Still around. Still around. So then, um, it's not entire. No one knows for sure what happened, but many people suspect that Activision stepped in and kicked Bungie around a little bit, and they demanded a, a sequel release rather than a major expansion, and so they came out with Destiny 2, and they tried to gear it more toward a casual audience. And because they did that, um, within a month after Destiny 2 came out, all the content dried up. And it, there was nothing for the hardcore audience to keep playing. And the community effectively died. And two expansions that came out were... Salt in the Wound. They were, they were terrible. Good. They were terrible pieces of content. They um, were not interesting. They were very shallow. Osiris was like awful. not even there. That was easily the most disappointing expansion I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, like, it, was, it was terrible. It was empty. Yeah, like you paid for really not nothing. much. Nothing, basically nothing. And the world they created, there wasn't much there. It it was disappointing. And then Forsaken uh, came out. No, after that was Warmind. Right, which was I said the two of them together. Right. Sorry, so I, Warmind, I didn't think I need to talk about that one because well, that one was kind of boring too. To to touch on it just briefly, Warmind was not good. It, it started to show signs of turning or itself around. None of the characters were any good, and that's what made me mad. But, yeah, none of the characters were interesting. They completely missed opportunities with the story. Um, the gameplay and, and the missions and everything fell super flat. The only thing that good that came out of those expansions was the the hunt for some of the exotic weapons in some of those quests. Yeah. Um, like, the, uh, the Whisper of the Worm uh, got everyone really excited because that was a completely random update that happened and it was a hidden thing and the community had to discover it and it, it it's rallied. a gun for those of you that don't play yeah Destiny. it's it's a super it's rare a super rare gun and that... the challenge to get it was super hard and the community it was a, a good challenge yeah the That's community which, came what together the community wanted yeah exactly yeah so now we are up to present day one year after destiny 2 came out forsaken comes out and they managed to pull their crap together. I mean, it's still not as good as the end of Destiny 1. Don't get me wrong. I'm still grumpy at them. However, Forsaken has fixed a lot of what was wrong with Correct. Destiny 2. Which yep. helped. The only thing I don't like is still the Cade thing. But I would assume there were other reasons there were, why. There were probably production and actor and... Yeah, other it, actor reasons. Actor reasons why. Because he like, had other things to do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for those of you that don't know... Uh, Nathan, Cade was Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Fillion. Yeah. And he now has another show that he's doing. That he's doing. So I would assume that it I mean, made it difficult for him. Well, yeah, because like half of Forsaken is voice acted with um, not him. Oh, yeah, Nolan North. N yeah. Yeah, took up the reins for that character to replace him. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, no one can really replace Nathan Fillion. That's true. He's such a unique person. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, there's still things that are wrong with it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Forsaken was definitely a good step in the right direction. And yeah, for sure. So, we'll see. Yep. But yeah, that's a good one. Yep, yep, yep. All right, on my turn? Uh, yeah. Since we're in the video game topic, I'll continue in the video game topic. Um, there was a lot of indie games that I interacted with this year. Ooh, yeah? Um, that are not, by any means, 2018 only. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fair preface on that. Um... Cuphead mm, made yeah. huge oh waves. Oh my gosh, yes. I can't, for... I can't believe I forgot about that. Dude, yeah, Cuphead was, I mean, a giant indie success for these two guys 
that created this game that had to refinance their house twice. Yep. Two brothers. Yep. I mean, they they did hire more people at some point in the process. Right. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying both of them had to refinance their homes. Yeah, to be able to, f- to, to fund the project. Yeah, and then I mean that's a huge risk. Yeah. And then it did phenomenally well. Mm-hmm. I, it's not a game that I've gotten to play yet, though. We still don't have it. I would love to play it. You're terrified of it. Uh, yeah, I'm terrified of the the rage it will induce into me. Um, unfortunately, it is also not for the PS4. Right, which is our main gaming experience. It's our, our main gaming console. Although now we do have, both of us, we now have PCs. PCs that we could play together. Yeah. So that is an option, but that's not something we've been able to do yet. I would I would love to stream it at some point. That would be fantastic. I know it would probably upset you, but... Oh my gosh. Well, I mean... I but... have the patience of, like, a crazy person when it comes to video games. Like, I can play Overwatch and get skunked for hours... And just still grin and bear it. I don't know I, what's wrong with me. <laughs> but, like, I think it would be fun to do Cuphead. The other ones I wanted to mention was Doki Doki. Oh my gosh, yeah. Doki Doki was huge. If you don't know what that is, it was a giant uh, step in uh, visual, visual novel, novel. Yeah. community. Because yep. visual novels are always known to be just some, like, flirty Trashy. game simulator. Known to be senpai waifu simulator. Yeah. Like, normally that sort of essence but doki doki was a horror yeah in a visual novel a psychological horror and and it was free yeah which is huge like having a free game that was that in our that creative and unique and well made too Mm mm-hmm yeah. So I wanted to mention Doki Doki. Um, the other one that I interacted with more this year um, was also Undertale and FNAF, which yeah. are both franchises that are old. Um, FNAF ended this year as well. Right. FNAF mm-hmm. 6. So this is pertinent to 2018. Um, and then uh, Undertale got you know, the... Not everyone's going to know what FNAF stands for. F- sorry. You're right. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Which I'm sure... So Almost any, I need, everybody's heard about I need to insert my opinion just real briefly. Real fan. Okay, go for it. The other reason I'm bringing up Undertale is Deltarune came out this year. Yes. So, continue. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I heard about Five Nights at Freddy's, I thought it was dumb. I judged it by its cover, and I couldn't have been more wrong. I highly encourage uh, anyone, whether you're a fan of suspense or jump scares or horror or any of that. I hate horror with a burning passion. <laughs> But I was completely wrong. Um, watching some playthroughs of FNAF uh, was really interesting. Um, but I love stories with deep lore and background history. And these yeah. games have crazy, space. crazy good deep lore. The creator is brilliant. He has hidden uh, meaning and information and story in every nook and cranny of those games. Um, Even if, if you don't play them and you're not like a jump scare person, I would highly recommend watching the game theories of yes, the plot absolutely. of Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, watch a playthrough of like Jack or Markiplier, like Jack Jacksepticeye, Markiplier. Watch them on YouTube and then go back and rewatch or watch uh, game theories, summaries of what yeah. they're talking about. So, so good. Like, even if you're, yeah, even if you don't want to watch the games with Jack or Mark, I would still suggest watch. You'll get enough out of game theory. Yeah. That it's just, it's fascinating if you're someone who enjoys lore and interesting storytelling. um, Because the way that all of these little hidden clues are left for the player. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's hiding things in source code of his website. It's crazy and... Obviously, it's huge. He made tons of money, and he's some guy who's yeah. didn't, who's like animated for like cheesy Christian videos yep. that lives in Texas and has he was two kids. Quit. Yeah, he if FNAF hadn't been successful, he's he attempted to make a bunch of games and they all failed. If FNAF hadn't been successful, he would have quit and given up. And now it's huge. Yeah. So so I wanted to mention that, and then I also wanted to mention good old Undertale. Yeah. Which, if you don't know what Undertale is, it's a cute adorable 8-bit game that suddenly gets really real oh my gosh towards the end of it it's one of the first games that i know of where you literally can play the whole game and not kill anybody yep like 
You, for a game that involves combat. Yeah. There's no... You can choose to be completely no violence. Passive. Yep. Yeah. You can go passive, which was cool. And then I watched the passive playthrough and I was... The it, ending is... Gets it right in the feels. It's beautifully done, especially for some 23-year-old that just decided to take two years and program this game. Yeah. So then Delta Rune, which is an anagram of Undertale, which mm-hmm. is kind of fun is the game that came out this year. It was yep. just a uh, trial, mm-hmm. and everyone was going crazy about it because this one, it exists in, like, a parallel universe of the other one. Yep. And it doesn't have... Where the other one, like, how you play the game affects it. This one doesn't actually get affected by how you play the game. It has other hidden messages in it. So I thought it was cool. He, he commented on Twitter that was like, I don't think I can have... Have you experienced the same thing again with Undertale, with Deltarune, and make it feel special? But I can make you experience something different that I hope is equally as interesting. Yep. So I'm really excited for where Deltarune is going, and I just love seeing all the indie waves that are Yeah, so many smaller games, so many smaller indie titles that are making big waves, you know, Mm -hmm. and doing good work. And it's nice to see. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. have to be a AAA title in order to... Like, Epic Games has made a wonderful engine. Unity is great. Um, let's see. The Undertale was made in um, RPG, RPG Maker, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, I mean, like, any... There are all these engines that you can use to create games that are, you know, don't have to be some crazy programmer in order yep. to do a lot you of this. You just have to be willing to put in the hard work and the time and the effort. Yeah. Yeah, the resources are more available now than they've ever been. It's so it's just I wanted to comment on all the indie experiences of the year. Yeah. All right. So next on my list, I have uh, the ending of Voltron. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, the last couple of seasons, two seasons came out this year. One yeah, in May seven and, then, and eight. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've had a love hate relationship with Voltron in you some ways. You among most of us. Uh, seasons one and two of Voltron were just absolutely incredible. Yeah. Amazing storytelling and characters. Um, the middle seasons uh, were a little rough. Hit and miss. Some Hit episodes and miss. were great. Some were terrible. Uh, we all suspect that they were rushed during yeah. production. It's mostly pacing issues yep. that suddenly when they snap down to six episodes per season, yep. that the pacing for the character development just goes all over the place. Yeah. Yep, there are plot issues because of the pacing. We think that content was probably cut and altered and they had to rearrange things because they didn't have enough episodes to fully flesh out what was supposed to be happening. I'd love to talk to one of them someday. I mean, I know right now they probably can't say anything, but like in a year when they're no longer like contracted or anything, I would love to sit down with Lauren Montgomery or um, Joaquim Dos Santos, I think Mm -hmm. is the other one. Um, and just say, you know, what, what was... happened during production? What, what did you guys deal with? Right. Yeah. Like what happened with the pacing? Was that what really, cause that, we both, uh, we suspect and suspect that that's what it's from yeah. as creators ourselves. But I, I would love to hear what their plans were to do with it. If they would have gotten yeah. as much time or maybe that's not it. And it was some other, you Could know, DreamWorks st- stepped in and did something. Yeah. I don't know. So, to summarize real quickly, though. Um, still a great show. Still a great show. If you like animated, if you liked, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, or Green Lantern, or Young Justice, those that's the pedigree that these two writers come from. Right. So, if you enjoyed any of their previous works, you'll probably like this one. Yeah, uh, I would say a show that uh, kids could watch. However, it is a show Young that adults. is... I yeah, young like. adults, uh, college age, would definitely be able to sink their teeth into and get a lot out of. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought the writing was surprisingly mature. Yeah. Um, without being uh, explicit with their content. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that there's something that I can enjoy that's not adult themes. You right. know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of that. And I still want a good it, story and I has... want an intellectual yeah. experience mm-hmm. without being subjected mm-hmm. to giant sex scenes and you know r-rated content in general it's nice to stretch my brain it's nice to have something where you can sit down where you can just watch it where um it's it's an emotional journey it's a character-driven journey yeah 
uh, it's it is uh, surprisingly um, intellectual. Yeah. Uh, but it is not rated R for all the normal rated R reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So that okay. ended this year. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and seeing every, all the plot threads finally come together that were started in the middle seasons that felt really weird and didn't really give you a sense of resolution and, and left the audience in a lot of tension. I really enjoyed seeing a lot of those things come to a close and see us, you know. I would still love to do a podcast for Voltron. Oh, no, Just, we're, we're definitely going to do that. we've done one before. And there's a lot more I could say about season eight oh, as absolutely. far as what well, we, we I could suspect, say... what I've read online, what I've studied myself. Yeah. So we'll probably revisit that. Um, absolutely. Let us know if that's something you guys are interested in. That was one of the first podcasts we did was on Voltron. Yep. Um, so I think it'd be really fun to do it again. But um, let us know yep. if that's something you're interested in. And even <clears> if you're not, we'll probably end up doing it anyway. Yep. Um, okay, so I get to go. One? Yeah, go for it. All right. Um. Uh, while we're on shows, I guess I can go shows. Um, My Hero Academia, season three. Hey, that was one of mine. Came out this year. Yep. And uh, it was lovely as always. If you have not seen My Hero Academia, even if you're not an anime fan, My Hero Academia is very Western-minded. The writer and creator of My Hero Academia was inspired by Captain America and Superman and more of the West-themed superhero Genre, I yep. guess you could say. And so because of that, um, it's a very, it's not super anime. It's a, <laughs> I guess is a good way to put it. It does still have anime moments. Um, but for the most part, if you're new to anime or not sure about the genre, My Hero Academia... Is a good place to en enter the scene. It is, and it's great to see that it's doing well here. We got a movie that happened this year as oh, well. Oh, yeah. For my hero academia which yep. was really, excellent it did so well that it got brought more showings at yeah. most of the theaters yep which was huge we got to see it in theaters which was fun um <laughs> we saw it in theaters and they didn't have the subtitles on for the first five minutes <laughs> and everyone was like we don't speak this language please give us the subtitles uh, yeah. but i guess there were showings that had it dubbed really yeah we I'm missed jelly. out on that. Yeah. yeah. We saw it subtitled, which, I mean, again, I don't want honestly, to get in that war. Yeah. No, honestly, I... I it liked, was still good, It though. was still good. I liked it for what it was, and it, it managed to get me right in the feels at the end. Yeah, it was good. It was I, good. The only reason that I, I really would have enjoyed seeing the dub, even, and I don't want to get into this war, is that I can focus more on the animation because I don't have to read. Right. And so seeing it in the theater, it would have been cool to focus a little bit more on seeing the visuals that were really well done. Yes, they were. So, yeah, I wanted to bring up my hero oh, academia. Uh, real quick, uh, two points of contention. There were two, not contention, but highlights. Uh, there were two amazing fights that happened in the season three. Of my hero academia. Of my hero academia. I won't spoil them. But they are fights that were, everyone could feel the need for these conflicts to happen, and they finally happened in season three, which was a huge milestone for the story. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. I, I think it would be fun to do a podcast on My Hero Academia as well. Yeah, so spoiler we might, cast. We might do, yeah, spoiler cast on that, because yep. um, that's an excellent study. Yeah, for sure. We'll go, I'll go next. Do you want to go next? Sure. sure. Go for it. So, uh, uh, easy transition from shows to movies. Uh, one of... My only movies on this list is Avengers Infinity War. Oh, yeah, that came out this year. This has been um, a long year. So, I mean, there are so many people that have talked about Infinity War. Um, there are so many memes that are out there about it. And uh, you're probably living under a stone. So I will simply say this, that my, on my only real piece that I want to add to this you know, pie, so to speak, is that I think it's truly incredible what Marvel has built from starting with Iron yeah. Man all the way these years later. Whether you like them or not, it's still an empire that has some sort of con continuity. Not just continuity, but there's a level of quality that they have managed to achieve with the vast majority of their properties and movies and, and releases that is unprecedented. Yeah, it's never no been one done else, before. Even, even the big series in, in intellectual properties like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. 
or like X Men or, or X Men. All these other major continuous movie series have all had problems. Right. Where Marvel, in my opinion, has knocked it out of the park again and again and again. Right. Which X Men is Marvel, but they were owned by 20th Century Fox. Right. So like. That's why I bring them up, because they've had, like, six movies of that. Right? Six? Uh, think. If you don't count the Wolverine movies, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, but, yeah, Marvel has, has done a great job of tying them all together, and then Infinity War came out, which was a cool crossover for everyone to enjoy. Oh, my word, yeah. So, that a good, good call-out. I forgot that even came out this year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um... I don't have any movies on my list. Really? No. I don't... Uh, I, well, if I didn't think about movies as much, I guess. I should have. I could have, like, scrolled through the movies. I'm sure there I've, were a lot I've got one out. in here that we both saw recently that made a huge impact on me, personally. Okay, it wasn't Mortal Engines. Nope. <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> skip right past that. Uh, no, Spider-Man. Uh, Into oh, the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse. Um, I didn't put that down. Why didn't I do that? That was a great... Oh my word. Um, stride for animation being a genre instead of a, uh, or being a medium instead of a genre. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm just going to comment real quickly on this. If you haven't seen it and you're a fan of Spider-Man in general, you need to go see this movie. Absolutely. I, I know it's animated. Please do not let that hold you back. Uh, the style of it has, is dripping with character and, and so much swag. You got to go see it. You used to um, swag a lot this podcast. I've, I've said it twice since the second time. Yes. I, I use that word to describe persona because in the same vein of persona being rich in style and visual All right, you know, I see aesthetic, what you're doing here. Yeah, I'm um, picking up what you're putting down. Spider-Man has that same uniqueness to it, mm -hmm. that same uh, force of the yeah. aesthetic and the power behind it. It is 100% worth seeing. It was surprisingly touching. It it was good. Like, what it was, blew my mind... It was, go ahead. What blew my mind is we saw Spider-Man and then we went and saw Mortal Engines within a couple of days. Mortal Engines had so many awkward, weird moments in the acting and dialogue and script. Compared to Spider-Man, which was an animated film, that had none of those issues. The script was well executed when you needed to... The voice to, actors were great. Oh, my word. When they you, matched the visuals great. Yes. When the script wanted to be funny, it was funny. When it meant to be sad and endearing, it was those emotions came through. The The movie was surprisingly real. They talked about real issues that real people deal with on everyday basis, and they handled it with grace, and the script nailed it on every turn. And while the plot was simple... simple. I think that was the only complaint that I have about it. Well... The only big complaint I have about it, I guess. I have other issues, but for the most part, I, I would have liked it to be even more Voltron-y mm -hmm. in the fact that it would feel a little bit more... I use young adult because I, I don't want to use the word adult because then it feels like rated R and like... You know what I mean? So I'm going to go with the word young adult sure. because I feel like that's the only word that really describes Fits. what I'm going for here Yeah, is that... Yeah, I feel like it's... I wanted it to be a little bit more for older audiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still... It feels like it's a teen movie instead of a kid's movie, which right. all Disney... I love Disney, don't get me wrong, but, like, everybody copies the Disney style. Yeah. Even, you know, and they all feel like kids' movies because animation has somehow gotten into this... But... Animation is a genre of children's movies. Which it's not, it's a medium, and this felt like an experimental piece yeah. that hit the big screen, which was huge. Like, yep. I I just wish it, I'm hoping we're heading in that direction, where it's mm -hmm. like, we can finally get, you know, college age intended content Content yep. that's animated. Because I don't think animation only has to live in this child realm. Mm -hmm. And so I think this one hit the teen realm, and I'm excited for it. Yep, exactly. Bottom line... Highly recommended you go see that movie. Yeah, support it, please. We need more experimental stuff that doesn't feel like the same movie over and over again. Yep. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up is I completed Inktober this year. Yeah, you did. This was the first year that yeah. I've actually completed Inktober. For those of you who don't know what Inktober is, it's where you draw in ink a, 
a piece every day of the month of October. Yes. And there's a bunch of prompts. So you get a prompt a day that you have to do a piece for. And I always start it, and I never finish it. And this yeah. was the first year that I made it all the way through to the very end and did a piece every single day. Now, there were some days where I had to draw two because I got busy, but I still managed to create all the pieces by the end of the month. month. Yep. And I was very proud of myself for that. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also did something else. Yeah. Um, since we're talking real quickly about creating stuff, yeah. um, if many of you might not know, if you go check out our Facebook page or our website, you'll see you know the, the posts for it. Um, this summer, we completed six chapters of a prequel for Chrono Keeper. Yeah, for the contest that Webtoons ran. Correct. Uh, while we didn't win... We didn't uh, even get honorable mention. We didn't, even get, we didn't get recognized at all. Uh, part of that was that we weren't able to start publishing chapters until August. Yeah. Um, we published late. We published late because when you're building a lot of stuff in 3D... We were doing something that no one else was really doing. Correct. It we don't we're not going to talk about it in depth here. We might have a separate podcast where we talk about the struggles of that production and what we went through. Um, I feel like that'd be an interesting topic to yeah. get more in depth onto. But uh, the point is, is that I'm I'm really proud that we did it. We learned so much stuff from it. Yeah, we did. Uh, we learned what we didn't. We learned what we needed to know. Yes. Uh, I feel like we grew in a lot of ways. We got better in many things, but we also learned what we need to get better at and what we need to gain new skills and new knowledge in. Yeah, definitely. And it was a good test ground. Uh, we had to post every single week, so we had deadlines, which was great. Um, so I, I think deadlines are good for any project. If you guys, since it's New Year's, right? New Year's resolutions are a big thing everybody does. If there's a project or something that you want to start, forcing yourself to have deadlines and due dates is huge yes so if if you are one that has a bunch of new year's resolutions commendable do it um but try and enforce yourself to have a deadline where it's due even if you know it's not school anymore right it's something personal force yourself to be like no this aspect has to be done by friday right and and then and then do it because yep. i think that was a big thing that helped us actually complete besties is um well complete six episodes of it of the prequel was having those deadlines of having to post every sunday yep exactly it was a great experience it was, it was a terrible great awful wonderful experience that i look forward to repeating again later <laughs> yeah i mean it's not it's not dead that's for certain there's a lot more that we're now knowing that we need to learn and and trying to drip our own selves in that experimental medium that we've seen right and try and and really push what what we can make and yep. make it feel like a unique experience in of itself yep and like i said we'll we'll touch again on this later and do a podcast so yeah moving on um so i'm gonna i've got two more major items and i've got honorable mentions go for it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read off my honorable mentions real quick, Go so for I can it. I can actually. Talk I'm excited a bit. to hear these honorable mentions. So I didn't make honor, that. Honorable mentions. I've got uh, the anime. Uh, I got a couple of anime. Uh, Megala Box is a remake from a very old uh, '70s anime. Um, I think it was just called Joe. Anyway, the point is, um, I would compare Megala Box to uh, things like Persona. In terms of a really rich style, and uh, also Cowboy Bebop, um, very deep, uh, interesting aesthetic and style. Great story. I watched it once. I probably won't watch it again for a while because it was an intense story, but it was good. Another one was Steins Gate Zero, which was the um, uh, sequel prequel because of time travel uh, to Steins Gate. Uh, critically acclaimed anime series, beloved by the anime community definitely you should check it out if you haven't seen it yet um and while i haven't played this game it was big it was a great indicator for me uh for the gaming industry a lot of we've had a lot of ups and downs in the gaming industry this year uh no man's sky 
uh, mm. came out with a lot of improvements to their game. They didn't abandon the project after being universally hated by everyone. Which is hard to do. It, it is. It's hard to buckle down and instead of cutting their losses and running away from a huge failure and a lot of hate from the gaming industry and community. Right. It's to admit it's the garbage and fix it. And they, you know? they did. Yeah. They made uh, three major content releases. Um, and now the game is in a great state. Apparently it's, it's actually enjoyable to play. There's actually multiplayer. <gasps> like gasp. Um, and in many ways they can no longer call it No Man's Lie. So that was really great. I thought it was an encouraging, positive story that came out this year, which was one of the few ones. So, um, And then lastly... It was a good year for indies. Again. It was a great year for indies. And so I've got uh, three things on here that are kind of honorable mentions because um, they are, for me, moving into the future. So, number one, uh, Hades from uh, Supergiant Games. Uh, Supergiant oh, Games yeah. is a great small Bastion. studio. Mm -hmm. They made Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre. Uh, I loved Bastion. I did not like Transistor, and I haven't played Pyre. But uh, when I saw the trailers for Hades that came out, man, like less than a month ago, I got super excited about the early access. Um, it's still a little rough, but it's showing great promise. I have no idea if it'll be good, but so far, um, just a really awesome little studio. There's only like 12 or 13 people that work there, but they make such cool games. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how that'll shape up during their early access. You can check out no clip or, uh, skill up. They've done videos and they've done things about it. If you want more information from that, uh, next thing is, uh, the God of War game that came out, mm -hmm. uh, this year it's, you know, universally praised, uh, as you know, an amazing title on the PlayStation. Uh, it is an exclusive, uh, I have not played it, but I want to play it. Um, I have watched significant parts of the game, uh, and I don't care that I've seen like a lot of the story. I am still planning on going and playing it myself because it looks just so good. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, I would recommend. I have more things on my list too, man. All right, my last item <laughs> is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which got Game of the Year. Yep. Uh, I, I bought it yesterday. I haven't played it. I installed it to my PlayStation. I'm looking forward to spending some good time enjoying that game all right so yep detroit become human oh yeah i have to talk about this i literally so i wanted to tell this quick story of how i found detroit become human because i've never played any of their previous games yeah. so i'm a preface Have, heavy that. rain or beyond no, two I, I haven't i've heard of them never played them yep. so and then um i was watching um Twitch streamers, and there was ads for uh, Detroit Become Human, and I was like, these ads are kind of cheesy, I don't know what this is, some sort of choice-based game, whatever. And then I, I watched Jacksepticeye, and he started playing it and was all excited, and he was like, I've been waiting for this game for a long time, so I was like, dude, yes. Yep. So I started watching it, <laughs> I watched the first part with Connor, where he he walks in and starts investigating this, like... Uh, android that's gone rogue and mm -hmm. is, you know, killing the, the family that it's supposed to be serving. And I was like, seeing him make different decisions and how it impacted the game, and I was like, whoa. I turned off the video, avoided everything about it because I wanted to experience it myself. Yep. Because it felt like something magical was happening. So I waited until I had space in my budget because I had already pre-ordered Pokemon, Let's Go Pokemon. Yep, and Smash and Brothers. Smash Brothers. And a bunch of other stuff. So... The budget was tight, so I waited, and I got it recently, and I played the whole thing in two days, and it was great. It was I. There are still problems with it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about it more, but again, different podcast. Um, cause I when I get super in like into something, I probably critique it more because I I want it to be ten out of ten, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have not played Detroit Become Human, it is. A really interesting visual novel feeling experience that's like you're playing a movie. You choose your own adventure. It's very much choose your own adventure. It's beautifully done, though. All visual novels are like these 2D flat image planes. This game is not. This game is a full, interactive, beautifully done 3D environment. Highly, highly recommend. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is played a lot of Overwatch this year. Got to play with friends mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Um, and Overwatch was the game 
mm-hmm. that I mostly yep. got to mm-hmm. play friends with. We got a full team of six of us together, and we played one night. And, and we crushed it. And we crushed it, and it was fun to kind of... Um, I'm one of the higher ranks among our friends. Mm-hmm. So it was fun to kind of shot call a little bit and help people understand the game more because um, Overwatch had a free time after Thanksgiving, I think it Something was. Like that, yeah. And so we encouraged our friends to get on it and try it. And so it was, you know, really fun yeah. to uh, kind of introduce them to the game and to play together as a team yeah. and crush. I don't know. There's something about uh, we went to school together on the opposite side of the United States. Mm. So a lot of our friends are still back there on the on the East Coast. And this enables us to kind of reconnect with them, and Overwatch was one of those ways that we got to do that yeah. this year. And so For I sure. wanted to mention it as something that was special to me was just um, rekindling friendships yeah. using a PlayStation. Indeed. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. No. <laughs> Nope. Uh, and all of, it should go without saying none of this is sponsored. This is just the things that have meant the most to us throughout, right. throughout the last year. Correct. We're not sponsored by anything. So. Nah, no. We're just else. commenting. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. Do you have a couple more things you want to go over? I have two more items on my list. Go for it. All right. So. Um, Pokemon was great. That's yeah. another thing I wanted to mention. But yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay. So. Uh, there's, there's, I have one anime and one internet web series that I want to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to hit on the anime first. So I am a huge sucker for a... Uh, man, I don't, I don't want to say love story. You do. It's romance. I mean, he loves rom-coms. Yeah, but like not the cheesy, dumb kind. They have to have something interesting going on with them. Otherwise, like, eh, I'm out. Like, don't even bother. Like, I consider, like, Voltron has romantic elements in it, but that's not the main focus. Right, but you like stuff that is the main focus as long as there's some sort of plot along with it. Okay, so, they don't come along very often, but I have one here that is genuinely good and is being praised uh, right now as a genuinely good series. Now, I have to warn you that... Being that it's anime, occasionally anime have really long, dumb names for a TV show. Oh, yes. I love the name of this one. Go for has it. Has a really dumb, long name for the TV show that in Japanese, I'm sure, makes more sense in their cultural like translation in the yeah. cultural setting. But when it's translated to English, it literally makes no sense. So, the title is, and I quote, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. That is the dumbest that name I've ever heard. That is the dumbest heard. name I have ever heard on the face of the planet, and it does it such a disservice. Because it is a fantastic um, show that does have um, it does have romantic elements in it, but it is mostly based around a uh, main male protagonist who keeps running into uh, people that keep bending and changing reality around him. And by helping these people work through some of their problems and issues, it ends up reverting like the problems with the world. This is not a conversation I have any. I have not no, seen no. this. Yeah, so like I can't add to the talk here. Yeah, and and all I've I can, heard him talk about it. That's about it. Yeah, and it is it is a show that's worth watching. Uh, basically, I'll, I will put it. I will leave it at this. The characters are what make the show. The plot and the the science and the the weird science fiction stuff that happens is kind of like second, like second speed to the main thrust of the show, which is the great characters and the problems and the things that they're dealing with, um, and how it handles uh, very realistic human experiences. Okay. And I would really recommend that anyone who wants to see a really fun. Um, not necessarily the lighthearted show because there are definitely some moments that are that way heavy on your heart. Um, but if you're looking for a good show that has great characters, really recommend it. Okay. You got another one? Well, I mean, you said you have one more, so I'm yeah. going to let you go. Okay, so my last one, and I'll just, again, we're running out of time, so I'm going to hit on this briefly, um, is Critical Role. I discovered Critical Role mm. about a year ago, uh, and they started their new yeah, campaign. Yeah, D&D was not something we wrote down. I know, right? That's Even crazy. though, yeah, okay. We started playing D and D as well. Uh, yeah, as a group, yeah, with friends, family. 
And that's been a lot of fun. So critical crit- Role, explain for those that don't know. Yeah, so Critical Role is uh, is an online web series that is through Geek and Sundry. Um, you should definitely check them out on Twitch or on their website. Not sponsored. Uh, not sponsored. Um, basically, uh, Matthew Mercer, who is a famous voice actor and a bunch of his close friends. It's high noon. Yep, McCree from Overwatch and a number of other uh, popular games. Um he and his voice actor friends uh, got together and started playing D anD D as a gift. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is a tabletop role playing game, and they got together and started playing it as a birthday gift for one of one of their friends. And uh, because they're all voice actors, and many of them come from stage acting backgrounds or drama or TV or things like that, uh, they got really into it and they just melted into their characters when they sat around the table and it was really cool and eventually geek and sundry heard about it and was like hey do you guys want to like broadcast that on twitch and like be one of our shows and then it exploded um if you guys not have checked out the series you really should uh you can watch it like a podcast or you can actually watch it like in in video format really highly recommend it if you guys don't understand D uh and know what that's all about uh, you can check out Critical Role's YouTube channel. They have a series that explains the basics of d d uh, If you want to get into it. If you want to get into it, or at least get some context of what they're doing on you the show. You can buy a lot of the books online. You, you, so yep. if you live in some rural area that might not have like a Barnes & Noble, and you do want to get into d d d d Beyond is D&D a great Beyond resource. It's a can wonderful check out. resource that you could check out if you're a college kid that you're stuck in the middle of Lord knows where. Yeah. That's a great way that you can get access to it if you're looking for something to do with friends. Yep. And you like writing stories and mm-hmm. developing characters, and yep. you got a good group of people that interact well together. D and D Beyond is a good way that you can get your hands on, you know, player's handbook and yes, stuff like that. Exactly. And um, uh, real quick, do they ever have sales or anything on there that you uh, can take advantage yeah, of? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, Critical Role, uh, whenever they broadcast on Thursdays, will often have uh, promo codes for stuff like that where. You can get discounts off of like the legendary bundle, which is all of their content on the platform. Uh, you can you can usually pick up the books. Uh, the digital books are usually about half the price of what you would pay for the physical book in store, so that's something to keep in mind. So uh, yeah, this is pretty much gonna be wrapping it up. Uh, yeah, we have we have a few minutes. No, we have two minutes. No, we have we we have a little more because we started around uh, twelve and nine. So we got a few minutes. Do you have anything else you want to touch on real quick? Well, I mean, I was just going to wrap up with the D&D thing, but if there's something else you want to talk about... No, no, that was my list. I was wondering if you had got through your list. Um, I think I got through most of my list. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Detroit, but we don't have time. I feel like that deserves its own podcast, because that was a pretty special experience. I super love Detroit, and, like, I thought that was great. Um, Let me see here. Most everything I talked about... Pokemon was awesome. I didn't really get to mention that very much. Um, Pokemon Go, the Switch versions came out for Let's yes. Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And although they were a more simplified experience, it was fun still. Mm-hmm. I still had a good time with it. Um, I haven't had enough time to super dig into it enough yet, which sucks, because I was busy unlocking all the Smash Brother characters. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a fun Pokemon entry. I'm excited for where the series is going to go next. If they continue doing kind of this 3D integration-y yeah. stuff, uh, I think could be really cool. And so I just wanted to comment that it's nice to see Pokemon reaching another generation as well. Because mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I enjoyed playing the games as a kid. Um, my cousins got me into them, and I was hooked. It's a good game for... It's, it's not super strategic. I mean, you have to know the types and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Basically, like, fire type is weak to, you know, whatever. Um, but the cool thing about it is if you need a game to just calm before bed, or just you need to chill. de-stress and you need a chill game... A zen moment game. Pokemon is a wonderful zen moment game. You can just sit there and just wander around, play some Poke Battles, you know, catch some Pokemon. It's, it's a great zen moment game, and I think Pokemon Go is... not Pokemon Go Eevee and Pokemon Go Pikachu are great for that because they go on the Switch. You can lay there in bed, play some Pokemon, and then pass out. And yeah. honestly, that's all I really wanted out of it, yeah. and I was very happy with that experience. Very so, cool. 
Other than that, I think you or I, I kind of grouped some of them together, like Cuphead, Doki Doki, FNAF, and Undertale all kind of got yeah. together. So because of that, I think I got mostly through my list, actually. Good. So to, to talk about future podcasts and content, um, as we've said, there are several subjects that we will be revisiting in the future. Yeah. Things like Voltron and Detroit Become Human. Uh, we might talk about D&D and Critical Role. And our experience with Besties would mm-hmm. be cool yeah, to do. Yeah, exactly. Our experience with Besties and our plans for Chrono Keeper and what we're doing moving forward with that. Um, we're planning on doing regular weekly updates again soon yeah. for Chrono Keeper. Um, it might be fun to do some production streams, too. I don't know. We'll have to figure out what exactly we'll want to do with... Um, with including you guys in the production of us moving forward. Because I, yeah. I know some people are, are interested in that. Yeah, but um, if any of you are interested, please uh, feel free to uh, comment or ask questions on our Facebook page. Or our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Or Twitter. Any of the above is what we watch. I think yeah. those are the three social medias we're on. Yeah. Uh, we also are planning on running a Discord at some point in the future. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that is a possibility. A possibility as well. I don't want to make promises though, but that is a possibility. Yep. <clears throat> so. Uh, so yeah, you should be seeing a lot more of us. Um, obviously on YouTube, which is where this podcast is going to be. It'd be cool to get this podcast in other places as well. We'll have to explore that. If there's a podcast place where you mostly listen to podcasts, uh, let us know where that is. Because yep. I know SoundCloud does podcasts, and there's quite a few other ones. So if there's a podcast place that you would suggest we go we would love to hear it yep exactly other than that i think that about wraps up for us yeah i think so so how was your guys's year to start a little bit of a conversation with you guys um what was you know the big top thing for you. five yeah. things that happened to you in 2018 what really made this year good we're trying to keep on a positive note with 2018 plenty of bad things happened we all know what they were yeah Uh, let's let's try to stay positive and pick out the good things yeah and so um, we'd love to hear what your top five were for 2018 um if there's any suggestions of podcasts you'd like us to chat about um we are you know creators and animation people and we love diving deep into any of such mediums of video games or stories tv shows movies whatever So, yeah, uh, I think that pretty much wraps up the Panda, Panda, PandaCast. Yeah. I think that's Gentleman what I'm Panda calling it. Podcast. Gentleman Panda Podcast. So long. I was just calling it the PandaCast. We need, to, like, you know, as we do this more, I'm sure we will come up with more, like, thematic things that will happen. But, yeah. you know, join this uh, journey with us, and we appreciate you guys being here. Yep. And we'll see you guys next week. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. See you latest.